for us, the vision is to change the man- mindset of humankind to m- make people understand that no matter what they are going through, it's okay and they can speak with other people. They can meet other people that are going through the same life event and they can gain relief super fast. And I think that the, the vision for us is to restructure humanity in a way of small circles. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax, and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. This episode is powered by Jay Ventures, a community-driven VC fund in Silicon Valley in partnership with Lomitech and sponsored by Homeward Ventures, Hippo Insurance, Upwest, Hillel at Stanford, Leap, and Birthright Excel, and in media partnership with CTEC. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Today, we're going to be talking about mental health. Meet Irad Eichler, the founder and CEO of Circles. Irad Eichler lives in a kibbutz, married plus four, and is a serial entrepreneur, was announced by the World Economic Forum as a social entrepreneur of the year. He is the winner of the Bar Ilan University Social Leadership Award and Social Impact Hero by Media Magazine. He is the founder and chairperson of Shakulotov, Israeli leading organization for vocational recovery, founder of Circles, an online platform for copying circles in life crises, and founder of Israeli Social Business School, Israeli Third Age Festival, and he is a podcaster. Irad, I am honored to have you here. Welcome. Irad Eichler, welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Super excited to be here. I came across an article at Forbes uh, that would talk about circles and talked about the work that you're doing. And, and I read through it and I was like, wow, I cannot believe, you know, that, that first, I, I'm so happy that somebody's doing it. Second, I can't believe that it hasn't been done already and there aren't enough solutions out there. And this crazy problem that you're solving, which really anybody, in the, everybody in the world faces, regardless of race, gender, ethnicity, age, whatever it may be. Uh, and, and I'm excited to, to dive deep with you. Uh, I'm also honored to be a very, very small part of the journey. Uh, so thank you for allowing me to do that. Uh, but over the next 20 minutes, I am going to just bombard you with some questions. So Irad, tell me a little bit about your own story and, and how you end up starting Circles. Yeah, yeah, I think I, that totally resonates, the kind of like the opening, because there's like a huge, huge, huge uh, uh, challenge uh, that humankind is facing. And I think it's, it's, it's the same as the uh, kind of mental health challenge. It's pretty much the same as the uh, uh, environmental uh, uh, challenge, and we'll talk about it. But in terms of uh, in my, myself, I've been building businesses that solve social problems for the last 20 years. My previous venture was uh, uh, integrating people with disabilities in the community and specifically in the job market. And uh, while I was building this, uh, this organization, uh, uh, I, my mother uh, had cancer and I witnessed her fa- uh, fighting cancer. Uh, during, it was seven years. And in the last few months, um, I spent a lot of time with her. And uh, I saw how lonely is the experience of being uh, a cancer patient. My, mo- my mother was a uh, uh, principal at a high school. So she led high school and she has like she was super you know uh, uh, um, present woman she was super uh, uh, enthusiastic she has a lot of kind of like uh, she was like the educational woman that you can imagine like really a leader and then within one day her identity changed and she became a cancer patient from a super successful woman to uh, a cancer patient and that brought a lot of loneliness to her life and even though i was he- with her uh, uh, she told me that you know I'm still feeling lonely. You don't really get what I'm going through. And then two, two days after, uh, I overheard her speaking with, another, with a friend of hers that had cancer as well. And then my mother was vivid and alive and I felt the connection there. And that struck me, like the difference bet- between, the con- between the two conversations. And yeah, and then after she passed away, I was dealing with grief and it was, uh, uh, it was also a lonely experience. And I went to therapy. I've been to therapy before. And it was super helpful because it was about my relationship with my parents and with my uh, spouse and my children and being a father and so on. It was really helpful. And then when my mother passed away, I went to therapy. And then it's kind of like it wasn't, it was really frustrating being in therapy because I wanted to speak about my grief and about my mother and kind of like wanted to experience kind of like 
what other th- people are experiencing. I wanted to talk about my grief, and it wasn't it, it wasn't the right setting. And then I kind of zoomed out and looked at at this industry, and kind of and I was looking for a for a go to place. As yourself, I was struck like uh, that in such a connected world in a way. There, people are so lonely and there isn't a go-to place for people to connect in a meaningful way and to have a meaningful conversation. Even when I'm saying that, I'm, I'm saying it's unbelievable that this, 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 uh, it doesn't exist, but it doesn't. And that's what we are building at Circles. That's kind of the, the essence of what we are building. We are connecting people into super small groups in a meaningful way. We are taking a bunch of strangers and make them uh, bond and connect between them. And I have, I, I don't know if we, we don't have enough time for uh, a lot of stories about our members, but I can tell you just one, one, you know, one just be, before you go, before you go into a member story, because I think that it'll make a very big impact just as it did on me. And, and I've been, I've been following for a while. And I think that what's really interesting here is to understand the perspective of, of how big the problem is. You're mentioning, you know, your own personal example, uh, but obviously every, everybody deals with grief and everybody deals with, 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 with issues. You know, let's just even take the United States in bigger picture. Well, what is happening around the world and has it been changing at all in recent years? Yeah. So I think if you look kind of like, let's look at trends. So first of all, the first trend that we, we need to mention is trend, the trend of moving to the city, which has kind of been in the last two years, but it broke down all the support system that we had in the villages and communities that we lived in. And then right. uh, another trend that came that, that kicked in is technology. And techno- most people talk about kind of like the online versus the offline and how offline is really meaningful as opposed to offline. And I think that, that there's a point there, but I think the most important thing to understand is it's not the offline versus the online. It's the synchronic versus the unsynchronic, real time, so we could have had this conversation, you know, could, you, you could have, I don't know, sent me questions, I could have recorded, but us spending time right now together and me talking, you nodding and, and vice versa, that's real human connection. And that's the real thing. And that's what kind of like social media did to us. It's kind of flattened uh, our rela- our, the relationship between people. And that, that made uh, uh, um, kind of like the epidemic of loneliness grow. And with it, mental health uh, uh, challenges that every one of us is experiencing. And one of my friends just had recently a birthday. I was the only one that called him. Everybody texted him, but it's, I was the only one that uh, literally spoke with him. And that's re- it, it really makes a difference. Like that's real human connection. So, uh, and when you look at mental health, like, uh, and you see the peak because of COVID-19, but also because of the, all of the trends that I mentioned, but it's also related to the solutions that are out there. In the last 100, 120 years, the only solution that was out there is therapy. And therapy, it's kind of, it's, 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 there's like, it's super effective in one way, but it's effective in 20% of the cases to 20% of the people because it's not accessible in, 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 in pricing wise. Uh, it's not accessible stigma wise. It's not, it's not relevant to, to a lot of the, uh, the things that we are going in life. So 80% of the people, 80% of the time need a different solution and there aren't any out there. And that's, kind, that's how the, the, the big is the problem. And we look at, for example, the, the US market and you think of all the caregivers, people that are taking care of their elderly pa- parents or people that are taking care of the special needs kid, 40 million people in the States are, uh, are caregivers. If you're looking at the, the, the loneliness towards the holiday, 11% of the Americans are saying that they will uh, experience extreme loneliness. That's 37 million people. 70% of Americans saying that they, they care about their families and friends dealing with loneliness during the holidays. You know, you have uh, uh, divor- divorcee, you have 1.5 uh, uh, divorces, 1.5 million, of course, divorces every year in the States. Like double it and then multiplied by five because that's kind of like the time that it takes to uh, so the, it's like it's unbelievable 20% of the population are people with special needs every people with special needs at, at least three people that it influenced their life one percent of the people on the population are people with mental health five five people will be kind of affected by uh, uh, and so on and so forth so it's 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 all of their life and i'm talking about people that are uh, uh, women that are giving birth and so like i have so many examples but at the end of the day, we need more mental health solutions out there and not just therapy. 
I think that, you know, first of all, it's very impressive that you know all these statistics <laughs> and, and there, are, there are a lot of them. So, so it's very impressive on one hand. It's very disturbing on the other hand, obviously. And I think that what really, you know, is, is making me think is, is the fact that this is, you know, the, the, the ways we grieve and the reasons why we grieve, they, they go, they span across, they meet every single person, regardless of how rich or poor you are, where you grew up, where, where you went to school. It doesn't even matter. We're all being struck by these moments where we need assistance and there just aren't good solutions. So before we even dive into circles and what you're doing there, you know, from your point of view, having thought about this field for a while, how can we help people at scale in the most ideal way possible deal with grief like this? What is an optimal solution here? So uh, there are two kind of like, the, there is the, the, the essence of talking about things. I think the most important thing mindset wise is for people to understand that if you talk about something, it brings relief. That's kind of like the essential basic of, of, of feeling better. There's like, and I think social media kind of like, as opposed to, it's counterintuitive, but social media looks like we are sharing a lot of things. At the end of the day, what we are sharing are the successes. Yeah. And that leads people to, leads people to kind of like, uh, uh, you know, to, to feel in the siloed, feel, feel lonely. So that's 100%. the first thing. And this, and the second thing, and that leads us to, to, to circles, I strongly believe that being part of a group is super important for people's uh, uh, mental health. And I live in a kibbutz. It's a small group, uh, uh, or it's, it's a big group. Uh, uh, you know, we are 500 people, all wow. alone, but we are kind of like, we know each other, and we are kind of like, we are taking responsibility together about our life in, in various ways. But I, me being part of this community really supports my mental health. And I think that people should be part of groups and, and and basically that's what we are building and just kind of like to the, the key key uh, 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 important things about groups so first of all if you're part of a group you don't feel lonely you're kind of like it, there is a sense of belonging so and the belonging it's the opposite of loneliness so that's the first secondly being part of the group you feel normal because you feel that people kind of like like you are, are going through the same thing as you are it makes you feel normal the third part is that you get to help other people. It's not just getting help is really, it's, it's, people need to, do need to get help, but getting help is one thing, but providing help, that's really empowering. And when you're part of the group, of a group, you, you help other people. And the fourth part, which is kind of like, it's not obvious, but it's really uh, uh, meaningful mental, in terms of mental health. It, when you are part of a group, you don't talk about your life. You actually live your life within a group. There's a lot of you, as, when you're part of the group, there's a lot of interactions between the group members. There's a lot of feelings. There's a lot of feedback. There's a lot of things going on, which is literally life. Uh, uh, and that's what kind of like groups uh, uh, bring us. And being part of the group, that's really uh, relieving and, and, and brings a lot of uh, uh, you know, vividness to people's life. Right. Now, if you're looking at you know, circles and what you're doing there with the product, how are you integrating this idea of groups and meaningful, uh, you know, meaningful group support to empower mental health, especially, you know, for those that are, that are going through some struggle? How are you actually implementing that as a technological product? Yeah. So, so first of all, I, I, I want to kind of like just to frame what is a group. Okay. A group, because uh, uh, Facebook kind of hijacked a lot of, of basic terms in our life. Group, <laughs> friends. Uh, which is not pretty, it's like, uh, when I say group, I mean a group of people that know each other, that have a meaningful relationship between them. They, they have kind of like a, there is a set of rules for the group. There's a bonding. So that's kind of, that's the, the basic uh, group. And the, 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 the most challenging thing when you look at a group is to build the group, to form the group, because you need to find the right people for the group in order to, that the, all members will get uh, will benefit from being part of the group. And, uh, and that's where kind of like we leverage technology because we, we, first of all, we use technology to find the right group for people. We collect data that people are sharing and we kind of like, and, and we help them find the right group for them. We use technology to reach a lot of like a, a broader audience uh, because everything is online. You can reach broader audience and then you can do a much more effective uh, uh, um much more effective matching. Uh, and so that's one algorithm that we are building. 
the other part of the groups is is when you look at a group there are three main components so i talked about the members like finding the right members having a small group of six to eight people another component is the group facilitators and as opposed to uh, uh their name not all of group facilitators know how to facilitate group they kind of like they know what they learn but it's not an ongoing learning so we, what we are doing is we are kind of like leveraging technolo technology to collect the formal and informal uh, knowledge about group facilitation and help them be the best facilitator they can be. I can give just one example to give us a, a, a great, a great uh, uh, best practice is to say the name of the members of the group in the first 10 minutes so people can feel that they were heard. So we are listening to the conversation and we kind of help the group facilitator remember which one of the group members they mentioned and we help them kind of like monitor uh, uh, the dynamic. And, and there are many examples. And the third part, so we said, we talked about group members, we talked about group uh, uh, facilitators and their tools. And of course, the professional tools, I won't go into all the features, but in, in essence, we are kind of making them the best facilitator. And the third part is the structure of the group, the setting. Super important for everything that like your, the structure of your uh, uh, podcast is that you have 20 minutes, right? It's a structure, and that keeps, that's kind of like, f it frames the conversation as opposed right. to two hours, right? So uh, we are structuring groups. So we have uh, off-session and off-session. We have method for the session, and we have method for getting people to form the group, get, getting people to know each other. There's stages on the group. So we use, te we use technology to make each part of, of it easy. Think about, for one example, uh, is that when you go into the on the first time that you go into a meeting room full of people could be your first day at job or at your work or whatever it's really hard to speak right like uh, what will people think of me it's really like getting into a group it's a it's a big challenge if you're even if you're super confident 100 percent. we take a lot of friction because we build the onboarding for the members in a in a in a, fr in a friction seamless way but they are getting all the information that they need about the process, about the meeting, about the group members. Uh, uh, and that kind of takes a lot of pressure and a lot of stress down and it helps them join uh, uh, the, the meetings. Now, I think that one you know, intuitive thing that a lot of people would have difficulty with is this thing, thought that, okay, if I'm grieving something, I'm going to go now online and meet a bunch of people that I didn't, don't really know and I've never really met. And they're, they also happen to be geographically in different locations and they're going to look different from me. They're going to speak different from the way that I speak. Am I going to be able to share and to be exposed in an intimate way, which I assume that these groups require? Well, what have you been finding as you've been facilitating already many groups like this? So I think, yeah, that's kind of like the most challenging thing for people. It's kind of like to, 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 to join groups. So we found that first of all, if you get to learn about the group beforehand, about who the members are, what they're dealing with, it really takes a lot of stress down. If you find the right group for the people, so it's not just grief group. Grief group is too general. Like, uh, someone that lost their spouse and someone that lost their child, it's not the same, uh, right. uh, group. So we have, for example, a user. Uh, a member, she lost both her grandson and her uh, uh, spouse. She joined two groups, two grief groups, but different groups, right? Because wow. losing a grandson, yeah. it's totally different than losing a spouse. And the connection that she has on one group are not, the, are not the same connection as she has on the other group. And that's that's where kind of like we, 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 we kind of like geared towards building super, super specific groups for super specific needs because we know that it makes a difference for the people. We want to have people the feeling that they're kind of like met their uh, lost friends in a way, like their, their other selves, like people that experience the same thing. Having said that, you need to, to, to have different characters in the group, right? You don't want everybody to be extravagant <laughs> yeah. in the group because sure. then everybody like me will take over the conversation right <laughs> now and uh, you, want, you want to have balance. Right. Where, where's, what's the vision here? So you have a beautiful product that people are using and you're, you're, they're joining groups and there's going to be some exciting things for, for the holiday with the loneliness pandemic. But what's, you know, where, where, where is circles in two, three, five years? So for us, the vision is to change the mindset of humankind 
to make people understand that no matter what they are going through, it's okay and they can speak with other people. They can meet other people that are going through the same life event and they can gain relief super fast. And I think that the, the vision for us is to restructure humanity in a way of small circles. That's, that's, that's the vision because on our modern life, we have different identities, right? I'm a parent and I'm also a businessman and I'm also uh, a partner and I also, I'm also a son. And for each one of those identities, I have different challenges and th different things that I'm dealing with. And the only, one that pe the only people that will understand me are people that are going through the same. So the way we envision the world is each one of us will be part of at least one circle dealing with anything that you are dealing with. And by the way, it doesn't have to be the specific circles that we, we see now on the website. It will be different circles in different structures. The structure will be different. We will have a setting for intensive circle. We will have a setting for super light circle and so on. So it's like at the end of the day, just what's important for us is the sense of belonging. We want to, people to have a sense of belonging and, and we won't stop until we kind of like get to the last man on earth or woman that are dealing with loneliness and kind of like connect them to other people. Sounds easy. <laughs> of course not. Uh, but it sounds like a, a, a problem that uh, you, I think that anybody would be incredibly proud to wake up every day knowing that that's where, that, that that's where they're headed. One of the questions that I enjoy asking the show is, you know, where do you gather your inspiration from on a daily basis? I, I don't think that question needs to be asked here. And I think that, you know, just me sitting here, I, I'm getting inspired and, um, And, and, and I can definitely see, you know, how people working with you and yourself, uh, you know, getting that passion and, and that, motiv that intrinsic motivation to push forward. And just like the story that you mentioned about, about this woman with her grandson and her spouse, um, I'm sure there are other, so many other stories that you're aware of, that your colleagues are aware of, that are literally changing lives. And, and so thank you for the amazing work. But I do have one uh, last short question for you, which is, If I were to ask any of your co-founders, colleagues, uh, people that really know you well, who, who, is, who, who are you? Who is Iran? So what are a few words that you would use to describe yourself? Wow, that's, a, that's an amazing question because I think I'm changing all of the time. So yeah. I think it's kind of like, uh, 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 I, 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 want, uh, I want kind of a get away from the question. I will answer <laughs> the question. I'm just saying that I think that I'm changing. But I think the, the kind of like the common... Uh, uh, like the, the basic thing that I, I really want to be, and I think I'm doing pretty, uh, uh, um, good job in doing it is being informal and understanding kind of like the, I, I, I understand that I'm not, uh, 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 what I'm doing. There's a, there's like, I'm not confused, but what, by my role, my position, my, you know, my, my, my kind of like, I'm, I'm. At the end of the day, every person on the t every colleague, every partner, every uh, team member, I think that uh, uh, they know that uh, I, I respect their opinion and them as I respect myself. So it's kind of like in 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 the same way. So I think that's I something it. that. Yeah. So what, what so what are the few words that you would describe yourself? How how would you? Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess I guess info, informal. So I'll tell you a story. Yesterday, I, I spoke to uh, to the IDC students here in Israel, and uh, and uh, and one of my team members told me, "Listen, yeah, it was in a, in a, in a, in, a, in a different in like in, a, in a, another company's offices, and she told me the the CEO there is really like you." Uh, uh, and I went there and I kind of like met him. Turned out I, I met the wrong guy, but uh, there are two <laughs> CEOs in this company. And I, and, and it was informal. So I was, I told her, yeah, I'm, I, yeah, I get it. I know what you said. So I think that's kind of like the, I think I'll that's, take the that's informal. It, it, yeah, uh, I'll, the informal and kind of like a uh, super kind of, like, I think transparent, uh, uh, and, and, and kind of like trying to, uh, um, to lead by example, meaning that I, I, I try, I'm practicing what I'm preaching. I love it. Irad, Tadaraba. Thank you very, very much. This was interesting and inspiring and, and, uh, and I loved every minute of it and uh, best of luck with circles. I'm really excited to see where, where you take this and then, and the impact that you're going to have on the world. So thank you very, very much. Thanks so much for having me. It was so much fun.